So I've been collecting samples from various sources for probably close to 10 years now. I used to buy these magazines from Future Music and Computer Music Magazine and they would come with these compact discs with gigabytes of samples and multi-instruments and loops and stuff like that. And the way that I would organize it originally was magazine, magazine number, and then all of the content from that disc. And you know, that made sense until I started to get up into like 150 gigs worth of samples and trying to find anything with an organization structure like that was just about impossible. So yesterday I started the monotonous task of organizing all my samples based on the type of sound it is, you know, kick drums, snares, uh, loops and stuff like that. And I wanted to show you before I finished it, how I'm organizing my sample library just to maybe help you avoid the pain that I had to go through to get this organized. I'll show you what I had originally and then I'll show you what direction I'm going and if you've got any ideas, leave a comment below for me and I'd be happy to check them out. So I've got a finder window open and on my audio drive, I've got a music and loops folder. And at the bottom here are those three magazines I was talking about, computer music, future music, music tech. I spent all day yesterday organizing all the somatic sounds and uh, stuff from like Echo Soundworks and whatever. And But before, if I would go to computer music, I would find CM131. And then I would have this three folders in here of classics and... Uh, CM drum samples and Groove Criminal drum samples and inside these would be another folder or 10 folders and then more folders and then more folders and it became basically impossible to find anything because there was just way too many folders to wade through so when you're when you're in a production zone and you're trying to create you know, the last thing you want to be doing is fumbling around through folder and folder and folder trying to find the sound that you're hearing inside your head. And you can see this, I'll show you here even in Ableton Live how much of a pain it was. If you're using like battery or contact or any kind of sampler style instrument and you have to find samples from your hard drive, it's, it's, a, it's a real pain in the ass. So anyway, like looking in battery, if I open it up, And using their little browser, if I went to my audio drive and into this Music and Loops folder and then into Computer Music and then into CM131 and then into CM Classics and then Cyclic Ear Candy and now I'm into Assorted and now I finally... I don't know what that was, but now I'm finally into a WAV file and say I don't like anything in here. Now I gotta go back up a level. Now I'm looking for, you know, whatever, vinyl noises. And I'm... I'm going through every one of these, one by one, and constantly having to go back, and then go back up another level, and then into this folder, and then into this folder. And, you know, some of these folders are like 10 folders deep. It's ridiculous. So. What I have done now is basically I've tried to organize all of my sounds based on the sound type. So when I'm looking for a hi-hat loop, I go to the hi-hats or the drum loops. Uh, or if I'm looking for kick drums, I've got a folder specifically for kick drums. Now doing it this way, you kind of have to customize folders out of all of these hundreds of folders to get it done right. And it's a bit of a pain to do, but in the end, I think it's going to save a lot of extra time just sifting and sorting and searching uh, at the end of the day. So this is what I've done now. So now I've got in my claps and snaps, I've got all of these different sample packs that just had the claps and I labeled them so that I know what vendor it came from, what pack it still came from. And you know, not that it matters, but it's nice to know where your samples are coming from. Uh, I've got construction kits, cymbals, Foley and atmospheres, effects, hi-hats, kicks, loops I've just broken down for now into drum breaks, uh, drum loops and instrument loops, and I'm sure I'll get more granular as time goes on with that, but for now it's just loops.
multi sample instruments if i want to make contact instruments a lot of these discs came with you know sample juno 60s from c0 to c8 and you can lay those out now i know where they are at least uh one shot samples just stuff that sort of didn't fit into this folder structure i've got a ton of these things in here patches for serum or silence or massive percussion and shakers rex files snares toms vocals and then i've got two folders here just from two of my friends with you know their custom drum kits but i want to show you how i did this i'll organize a folder and uh if you're not doing this already hopefully it helps speed speed up you and your workflow as well so if i go into computer music for example i'm going to resize this finder window and I've got basically another finder window behind it. I'm on the same spot, music and loops, uh, but with all of those things there. So if I go to CM127, and these are 16-bit CM classic samples. I have no idea what that is. It has no relevance to me when I'm searching for something. Or 24-bit Balearic, Balearic Bliss samples. I, I don't even know what that means. And then it's into the vendors here, Cyclic and Groove Criminals and Hat Tricks. And, you know, one's got straight to the wave files, the other's got more folders. So I'll show you what I'm doing here now just once and then kind of show you in Ableton how easy it is to sift through and find all this stuff after. But with the way I'm organizing it, I'm still using the vendor name. I'm trying to refer to the edition that it came from, if it came from a magazine. And if there's any other sort of descriptor words that I can find later through searching, I'll use those as well. So for this cyclic, these all look like construction kits. They've got a BPM, kit 01 uh, is 100 BPM, kit 02 is 135 BPM. So I don't need to like separate all of these out because it goes straight to the wave files right after. But what I will do is rename this to cyclic and put a hyphen, CM127. And another hyphen, and then I'll grab this Balearic Bliss and maybe the 24 bit so I know it's a 24 bit file. And I'll copy that and I'll come over to the folder and press enter and the down arrow and command V to paste it. And that's it. I don't need to know any more than that. I've got a folder for construction kits, so I don't need any more descriptors. I can grab all of these now and just drag them straight over to construction kits. And boom, Bob's your uncle. They're all right there. Now if I go to Groove Criminals, I want to do the same thing. Press enter, hyphen, CM127. And if I paste that 24-bit Balearic Bliss into there and leave a hyphen, for now, I just want to see what all this stuff is. So I've got beats. And if I play it, Great, that's a drum beat. Looks like they're all drum beats. So now I want to take that whole name and copy it and just come over here to this beats and put that all right in front of it. Now I'm going to grab this and I'm going to put it in my folder for loops. And if I look in loops, like I said, I've got drum breaks, drum loops, instrument loops. So just pop it straight into drum loops. Forget about it. On to the next one. Now I've got these chilled EPO chords. I have no idea what this is, but it looks like chords. Uh, yeah, they're all chords. Chilled chords. We got a E diminished fifth. F sharp minor. Sounds nice, like a Rhodes type sound. So I'm just gonna grab that, whoops, rename it. Add that Groove Criminal CM127 stuff in front of it. Because it's not a loop, it's chords. I throw these in the one-shot samples and I've got the same thing probably right here again so I can grab that chilled pad chords A, command V, chilled pad chords B is the same stuff it looks like and this chilled vibey chords is the same as well so oops, grab all three of those, boom, straight over to one-shots. Now I've got a pad multis so this is where I'm talking about these guys would sample junos or analog strings that would give you contact patches and uh you know from there i i haven't even heard half of this stuff i probably had it for eight years because i just didn't know where to find it 
but pads, multis. I want to take all of these actual audio files and I'm just going to press enter, move my cursor to the front, command V, take all those pad multis and just dump it straight into the multi folder. Done. Now I've got drum hits. I don't want to separate out every one of these snares. Some of these packs have like two percussions, two hi-hats, two snares, two kicks. So this is something I can do later if I want to get granular with this, but same thing. I'm just going to grab it, paste all of that, and put this into one shots and just be done with it. The one shots is probably just going to be my next bottomless abyss, but at least it's sort of organized. Now I've got riffs. So if I listen to this, Okay, so that's an instrument loop. Coming over further down, same thing. They're probably all bass instrument loops. All right, that's some weird synth from the 70s loop. Grab it, rename it. Now I'm gonna move this into loops and dump it straight into instrument loops. And that one's done. Now I've got hat tricks. This says multi. I didn't even hear anything there. It was probably so low. And that's way too high. I think the dogs heard it. Alright, so it's some synth. Whatever, I'll figure it out after if I decide to make a contact instrument out of it. In the meantime, I just need to get it organized. So, it's not called Groove Criminals now. It's just hat tricks, but I can delete that out. And dump that straight into the multi-file. Great, that whole thing's done. Take all that stuff out. Here's a thousand drums. I don't even know why you would need a thousand drums. I have no idea who made this. So I'm just going to take, take this 16 bit CM classic samples. I'm going to name it CM 127 and I'm going to put a hyphen and that's it. Actually, I don't even, I don't care that it's a thousand drums. It's hi hats. Good enough for me. I'm going to grab that name right in front of hi-hats, command C, and now I'm going to go to junk and I'm going to go to kicks and rename it. And I'm going to go to perks and rename it. And I'm going to go to snares and rename it. I think you get the idea by now how to organize this, right? Take the snares, move them over to the snares folder. I got perks, percussion, move that to the percussion folder, kicks. I got kicks, put it in the kicks folder. I got junk, which is probably just junk sounds tapping around for, you know, whatever. Yeah, junk sounds. So I made a Foley sound, or a Foley folder. I'll just put it in there for now. Hi-hats, great. So the cool thing about this now, that disc is done. Everything's organized into its respective category. Hopefully, you know, I'll be able to find that sound if I'm looking for it in the future. But the nice thing with live, and even with uh, now with all these contact instruments and battery instruments, if I go into music and loops, now I'm looking for a hi-hat. So I've got all the hi-hats within these folders and they're all like literally right there now. I don't like that one, great, I'll just move down. And I've got closed open, whatever. Looking in Ableton in their browser, you can add that music and loops folder straight to the browser under places. And if I want to clap and a snap, everything can be done from your keyboard from here. Highlight what you're looking for, right arrow to open up the claps and snaps. I've got a Boy Wonder kit number one clap. And now I can just move down. And now I can just move down through all of these. If I don't like any of those that I'm hearing, left arrow, left arrow, close the folder, down arrow, right arrow. And I'm moving on. So anyway, that's it, you guys. It's nothing earth shattering or groundbreaking. If you're doing this already, kudos to you. I wasn't. I had a lot of sounds that I didn't even ever look at because I would just go into this deep vortex of folders within folders of folders. And it's frustrating when you can't get the sounds you want quickly when you're trying to make something. It really pulls you out of flow. And I think to me, the whole purpose of you know production, the goal, is to be able to move quickly is, and being able to find your sounds is one of the ways that you can move quickly. So 
Like the video if you like the video, subscribe if you want to. I hope you got something out of it and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.